Uh oh. excited about this one. So this is a bit of a first for me. Not only is it the first time I'm talking about spirits on camera, um, it is the first time I am tasting a an agave spirit that is from India, which I find found really compelling, and I decided to put this one on video as I wanted to start talking about my personal adventures with mezcal, tequila, spirits in general. Um, and I was like, this is one that I need to share. Uh, a lot of people in this biz aren't really familiar with it. So apparently, Queen Victoria, when, during the colonization of India, decided to import agaves from Mexico. And it wasn't because she liked the drink necessarily, although that would be pretty awesome, but rather because Agaves have kind of classically been used um, as fencing. They can grow really closely together and the pincas cross over into each other and anyone who's ever been near an agave pinca know that they are sharp and they are firm and you know it's not something you want to try to walk through. And she would use them on the sides of train tracks um, that they were running through India to keep cows from wandering into the tracks and getting run over by trains and I'm sure you can imagine the type of mess that would make. Um, and so agaves have been growing in India for well over a century and they've really taken nicely to certain aspects of the terroir, the really magnesium rich soils there, the warm climate and I'm super curious to see how the terroir has affected this plant. Now, I have not had great experience with agave spirits made outside of Mexico. And so I'm, I'm, my hopes for this one are kind of tempered. However, it is made by people who have a history with agave spirit. It's rather from Porfirio and he, Martin Grasso and a Silicon Valley techie um, Desmond Nazareth decided to get together and start this project. So, you know, it has some of the history of tequila production involved with this, and I'm hoping that they were able to translate some of that know how into the spirit. Without further ado, let's check it out. And so this is from uh, Agave Americana. So it's, you know, it's not Blue Weber, it's not Espadine. I'm not sure specifically which sub-varietal of Americana they don't say. Um, and anyone else is, who's familiar with Americanos. Um, Coyote is, well, Coyote in certain places is a type of Americana as well as Arequeño is a type of Americana if you're more dealing with mezcal parlance. So I'm not sure where this one falls in, but I don't think that really matters quite yet. I do wish to dig a bit more into the spirit, however. 
So this one was kind of cult name, code name, excuse me, XS3XA. I have no idea where that designation came from, probably just a random jumbling of numbers and letters. Let me grab a glass here. I think a Glen Cairns is good for this one. So this one is, they say it is roasted in uh, very traditional methods. I don't know if that means brick oven. I doubt that it means um, underground horno. It may be an autoclave or a kind of a steam oven, but um, let's find out what the nose is saying. Uh, so, off the bat, it reminds me a bit of Lowland tequila and kind of single distilled brescia. It's kind of funky. Uh, funky, funky, very vegetal kind of... Um, yeah, if you've, if you've ever smelled a single distilled Maximiliana or a single distilled um, Espadine, um, it just kind of has that funky note with kind of like a fermentation vat off in the distance somewhere, some goats, some hot Mexican sun, kind of leathery some tamarind, some other dried fruits. That's kind of interesting on the nose. Not really what I was expected, not as clean, clean as I was expecting, which I, actually makes me quite hopeful. Uh, if it was super clean, well, probably wouldn't be that exciting. So let's, let's give this one a go. So this is bottled at 40%, like most tequilas that we have on the market here. You get a lot more of that kind of um, tamarind, definitely tamarind, tamarind, dried fruit, um, dried pineapples, dried cherries, more of that leather. And if you've ever had like um, roasted agave straight out of uh, an oven, and just kind of broken off a piece and chewed on it. It's a bit of that note. But really delicate. It's kind of washes over the palate and then kind of dissipates. It makes a mark, but it's quite clean. And I'm not in love with the way it kind of disappears off the palate. However, I do find the profile to be somewhat compelling. It's a lot more intriguing than I was kind of expecting from it, um, but I think that's pretty, pretty awesome. And considering like how new this idea is, you know, producing agave spirits outside of Mexico, you know, I think it's a good first attempt. Um, I do wish it was bottled at a higher ABV, 45% plus, but that's probably my bias because I'm used to drinking, you know, mezcals from anywhere from 45 to 80% alcohol. Um, so my palate is conditioned for those really intense, rich, lush, uh, fatty, textural spirits. And this definitely is not that, but I do feel pretty confident that somewhere behind this being brought to proof is actually a pretty compelling spirit. And if you all are listening to this uh, at Porfirio, you know, let's do some overproof, man. Let's 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 not hold back on this spirit. I think this has some potential. 
And, you know, for any agave spirits geek like myself, I do think this is something that is certainly worth checking out. Uh, it is not price prohibitive. It is probably pretty damn difficult to find. I had to have this, have this shipped to me. And I'm here in New York where I'm used to honestly having access to damn near anything that I would want. Um, but, um, I don't know. This has been pretty fun. Let me take another... This actually reminds me of this receipt from Don Manuel Sacero. And he's in Jalisco, in Sierra Occidental. And I picked this up from him at a, at a, a previous visit. And the nose reminded me of a lot of this, just that really funky, rustic, um, hardcore, old school mezcal. Um, but there, to that spirit, um, or in that this that particular Rocia that I was just mentioning was made at the same place as the Sierra Occidental uh, Rocia from La Venenosa. A uh, different maestro, but same place, very similar style, also from Maximiliana, the same agave. So if you have access to that one, you'll get a good idea of what I'm referring to with that spirit. Um, but that one, it has a focus. It is unrelenting. It is unapologetic. Because because it's single distilled and the way that they are making the cuts, you know, the it's all agave. There's no water in this, in that, rather, to... There's no water in that to kind of lack of a better term, water down the essence of the agave. Uh, they are almost certainly bringing this down to proof with water, which is not a crime because I love tequila, and tequila is classically brought down to proof with water. Many mezcals are. Um, I don't know how they're doing it. I don't know if they're how long they're resting this spirit beforehand, but um, this one lacks kind of that focus and levity that that has, even though it's even lower proof, but it's pure intense, unadulterated agave. And don't get me wrong, I, I, I am enjoying this. I think this was a fun venture. And a bit more on this one. So it's from the South Highlands. It's from the Highlands of South India, rather. Um, I'm not sure climatically how that, how that region is. It's not a place I've been to before. Um, I'm really curious. Maybe a trip is in order. But um, I don't know. If you want to have any questions about this one, shoot me a line. I will certainly try to get the answer to these questions because I'm, I'm curious to find out more about this one myself. Uh, perhaps I'll reach out to them to find out more. But um, you know, anyone who's made it this far, I appreciate it. Uh, let me know what you think. I really want to know what you guys think, what you all want to see. Uh, this is the first of hopefully many. I have a shit ton of agave spirits back here to talk about. Um, and hopefully I'll get some more in to talk about. Uh, eh, I'll take requests if you all have those as well. Yeah, pretty solid. I'm happy with it. I can't wait to share this with some of my friends. And I'll check you all later. Peace. Dijibé.